good morning and welcome to Begin in the Word. I'm so glad that you've joined us for today's study. Today we will begin our consideration of Paul's letter to Philemon, the book of Philemon. Today's study will be an introductory study where we give the background to the epistle. In Philemon's 1 verses 1 and 2, the Bible says Paul, a prisoner of Christ Jesus, and Timothy, our brother, to Philemon, our beloved friend and fellow laborer, to the beloved Apphia, Archippus, our fellow soldier, and to the church in your house. Here we'll talk about the author and the audience of the epistle. The author is generally spoken of as being Paul, and that is certainly true because we see that here in the text before us. But as with many of his epistles, Paul co-wrote this with Timothy or other co, uh, co-workers or companions and labors. And so though Paul was no doubt the primary author, Timothy was involved in the sending of the letter. And they jointly wrote Colossians, which was uh, at the same time, which was a companion epistle to Philemon, as we will see in our study today. Philemon lived in Colossae, and we know this because he was associated with Archippus and Onesimus, which Colossians chapter 4 names both of those as being from the city of Colossae. And here in this letter, we find both of those people associated with Philemon and uh, in a way that's clear that they were in the same area. So we conclude from that that Philemon was a part of the Colossian congregation. Considering now uh, some of these characters that are named here, besides Paul and Timothy as the authors, but people who are named in the audience, he mentions Apphia and Archippus. And both of these seem to have been members of Philemon's household. Now, when we look at Apphia, we, uh, looking that word up or that name up, we learn that that is a female name. So many scholars believe that Apphia was Philemon's wife and that Archippus was his son. We learn in the Colossian letter that Archippus was a worker in cooperation with Paul. That's uh, Colossians 4 and verse 17. And in the text before us in Philemon, he mentions Archippus as our fellow soldier. Now, he may have traveled with Paul some, no doubt, but as far as being a continued companion of Paul, we don't know enough uh, from the reading before us to draw that conclusion Uh, It's just as likely that he was just a member of the church there at Colossa and a worker in that church, part of Philemon's family, who intermittently spent time working with Paul. We just don't know if it was an arrangement like that or if he was someone that more often, often traveled with Paul. Paul here insinuates his work with Philemon. In Philemon 1 and verse 17, he said, If then you count me as a partner receive him as you would me. Now he's talking about receiving Onesimus, and we'll get into that in greater detail in our future studies of the Philemon letter. But I want to ask us to observe uh, in terms of the audience of the epistle that obviously we understand it was written to Philemon and his household, but it's written to Philemon as a close friend and work partner with Paul. Paul and Philemon knew one another closely. And as we read earlier in the epistle, Paul spoke of him as a friend. So this is someone that Paul had a deep acquaintance with, and he's part of the Colossian congregation. Now, when we look in the Colossian letter in Colossians 2 and verse 1, Paul spoke of there being many there that had not seen his face. And so because of that, some people conclude that Paul had never worked at Colossae. But Paul knew Philemon and his household well who were at Colossus, so how would we reconcile all of that? Well, we know from the book of Acts chapter 16, as well as Acts chapter 18, that Paul had labored in the region of Phrygia where Colossa was situated. And there's a couple of possibilities. He could have gone to Colossa and labored at an earlier time, and then later on there'd be many people brought to Christ as part of that congregation who were not there at the time Paul was there, and so they had not yet seen his face. That's one possibility. Another possibility that seems less likely to me is that Paul laboring in nearby towns close to Colossa uh, 
uh, would have some from the Colossian congregation who were converted by someone else's labors come and visit him where he was working in a nearby town. That's certainly possible, but it doesn't necessarily seem to be likely. I think it's more likely the case that Paul was, when he worked in Phrygia at one time or another, either Acts 16 or Acts 18, that he labored in Colossa, and that later on others working in that area, and we know of several from the Colossian letter and the Philemon letter, that those others working in that area brought many people to Christ with the teaching of the gospel. And these new converts had not yet seen Paul's face, as he mentions in Colossians 2 in verse 1. We learn, of course, that Paul was in prison while he wrote this epistle. And uh, we see him mentioning his chains here in uh, Philemon 1, verse 10 and 11. I appeal to you for my son Onesimus, whom I have begotten while in my chains, who once was unprofitable to you, but now is profitable to you and to me. So Onesimus was benefiting Paul while he was in chains or while he was in prison. And we know that in Philemon 1 and verse 1, Paul mentioned being a prisoner there. He also mentioned in the Colossian letter being in prison. In Colossians 4 and 18, he asked that they remember him in his chains or in his bonds. So this strengthens the idea of Colossians and Philemon being companion epistles. Now, Paul was in prison several times. There were two particular Roman imprisonments that are brought to our attention, uh, one at the end of the book of Acts and then the other one towards the end of Paul's life in 2 Timothy. So which imprisonment was this? Well, in Philemon 1 and 22, he speaks of a re an expectation of being released and expecting to go and visit the congregation at Colossa and stay in Philemon's home. Well, he wouldn't have that expectation if this was the final Roman imprisonment that he infers in 2 Timothy because that was right before the end of his life and he was expecting to die very soon. He told Timothy, I'm ready to be poured out as a drink offering. He was about to be killed and he knew that. So this is more likely the early Roman imprisonment or his first time in prison in Rome when he had appealed to Caesar and gone through a series of trials uh, from Jerusalem in route to Rome and we find him coming to Rome and going in prison in Acts uh, chapter 28. And so that is probably where Paul was when he wrote Philemon and when he wrote the Colossian letter. And the purpose of this letter was to make an appeal for Onesimus, which we see mentioned in the text that is on your screen. And Onesimus had been a servant of Philemon's and he escaped that servitude, which was not legal under Roman law, and Paul then, while Onesimus had fled, by chance encountered him, taught him the gospel, and converted him, and now labors to reunite Onesimus as a new Christian with his old friend in Christ, Philemon. So that gives us a setting of the letter and a flavor for the things that we can expect in the studies to follow as we break down the letter verse by verse. I'm so glad that you joined us for today's study. I hope our study has enlivened your interest in God's word and that with a lively interest in God's word, you study it often, drawing closer to him. And as we have begun today in the word, I pray that you'll live out today and every day in the mighty word of God. Thank you and God bless.